call the meeting to order. Uh, this is the October Parks and Recreation Advisory Board meeting, or the November. Time flies, right? Uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise and join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Sherry for roll call. Ed Heil. Present. Jason Keough. Here. Rick Knotts. Here. Ashley Pasquale. Here. Robert Smith. Chuck Vaughn is excused. Scott Welty. Here. Lauren Vetter. Mark Zeef is excused. And Council Member Michelle Lynn is excused. Okay, that takes us to uh, agenda item number four, call to a public. Uh, if any members from the public want to address the board on items that are within our jurisdiction, now is the time. There's a three minute um, time limit. And, uh, and we also request that if you have something to discuss that's on the agenda tonight, that you wait uh, until we get to that item on the agenda. I don't see anyone jumping for the mic, so we'll move on to Number five on the agenda, minutes from the October 28th meeting. Any questions? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the October 28th meeting. Uh, vote. Uh, all in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm not uh, voting since I wasn't present. Fair enough. <clears throat> Agenda item six, communications announcements and staff reports. Mr. Keene with your staff report, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Youth basketball registration begins December 2nd for grades three through six. The Elks Hoop Shoot will be held at the community center on December 5th. The after school program staff training for youth mental health first aid it's going to be held on December 7th. Uh, children's celebration at Rotary Park is on December 14th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, play, the next play performance will be at Smoke Tree Elementary School on December 19th. And registration is currently being offered for a youth winter break camp that will be held at Starline Elementary this winter. Uh, in the pool area, the dog swim is scheduled for Sunday, December 1st from 10 a.m. to noon. Uh, at noon, the pool does close. Uh, we will be draining it this year and uh, doing some annual maintenance. So the pool will be closed until December 15th and is rescheduled to open on Monday, Monday December 16th. All of our chair classes, sit, be fit, and walking classes will be offered during the time that the pool is closed. Schedules are available at the community center. There will be a gingerbread house decorating night that will be held on December 17th at the community center. Class comes with all the gingerbread house makings and candy and frosting to decorate. Uh, we'll also be showing the Polar Express as a swim-in movie on December 20th from 6 p.m. to 8.30 in the pool. A couple upcoming events at the community center. The Art Guild Holiday Shop will be November 30th and December 1st. Rock This Band concert will be held on December 2nd. The Women's Networking Association of Arizona Shopping Expo will be held on December 7th. The annual community dinner will be held on December 13th. There will be two seatings for that dinner, one at 4 p.m. and one at 6 p.m. On average, we serve 500 at each, at each setting. Uh, there will be a Reba McIntyre tribute concert on December 17th. And then the Arizona Collectibles and Firearms Show will be held on December 28th and 29th. And then just some of the special events going on around town. Swim Across the Channel and Lighting of the English Village will be on November 29th. The Christmas Tree Lighting will be held December 1st in Wheeler Park at 5 p.m. The River Riders Toy Run will also be held on December 1st on McCulloch Boulevard. First Friday will be held on December 6th 
on McCulloch Boulevard. The Boat Parade of Lights in the Bridgewater Channel will be December 6th and 7th. Uh, the Triple Crown Parade of Lights Baseball Tournament will also be held the same weekend, December 6th and 7th. Teams will be playing at Sarah Park, Dick Sant Park, Rotary Park, and the ASU Ball Fields. Toys for Tots Fun Fly and uh, Toys for Tots Fun Fly at the Jim Sterling Memorial RC Complex at Sarah Park will be held also on December 7th. And AMA Big Six Motocross Race December 13th through the 15th at the Island Racetrack. With that, that concludes my report. With that, we'll take any questions. Mr. Chair, Mr. Keo, um, you said that the yeah, that's you. I, I was going to let him answer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I thought I was on the spot. <laughs> Keen. Um, you said that the winter camp is being held at Starline this year. How many children do you have spots available for? Um, I, I think it's 150 as well. Oh, okay. Wonderful. And I have one other question. Yeah. The mental health first aid training for the after school staff? Correct. Will that include youth mental health first aid as well? Yes, it will. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. We'll uh, move through the agenda into section seven. This is the public hearing portion of this of the uh, uh, meeting. And um, 7.1 is a discussion on Dick Sant Park pickleball court project update. Back to Mr. Keene. Thank you, Mr. Chair and board. So uh, before you, we'll have the uh, Dick Sant Memorial Park pickleball court what this project's calling is as phase two um, because it is the same design firm that designed the first phase. Um, so this is kind of a layout of the overall project. Um, this is the current, current set of courts. Uh, you can kind of see that in the master plan, these have been adjusted the new set of courts that we're building, these uh, eight courts here, have been tilted slightly, so they look a little bit out of alignment. And the reason is um, the Pickleball Association came to us, and this set of courts, if you're playing uh, on the back side here, you're facing right into the morning sun. So by turning those courts, it, it alleviates that uh, the blindness that that you will you will see so that that's one of the considerations in this project is changing the alignment and then even on the the future last set over here you can kind of see how they've been adjusted as well um, to fit everything in so everything in the dotted line is in the scope of the work uh, for this project this is the current parking lot uh, we'll be adding a road that comes along the inside of where the part of the current courts comes down to a new parking lot on this side of the new courts. There's approximately 50 spaces that will be built with part of, as part of this project. There is still room, as you can kind of see, um, where more additional parking will be added in the future uh, as these other amenities get added to the master plan of, of Sarah Park. Um, one question that does arise a lot is um, additional bathroom facilities and those while not being added to this project they are here in the next phase um, as we build those ball fields um, it was it was thought that the current uh, restrooms are adequate for regular play uh, and then if if and when tournaments happen out there that we would be renting uh, portable uh, bathrooms for for that uh, so a couple things I didn't uh, these are very preliminary uh, drawings we do I, I brought three of them for you there's 22 in the set um, but they really repeat each other uh, quite a bit and show um, show a little bit of some of the additional amenities that we may or may not uh, get to depending on the budget I did also meet with the Pickleball Association on Friday of last week to go over all of these drawings 
and um, have their input as well uh, so that we can make sure that we're building you know, kind of what the users are, are looking for. Uh, so here's a little bit more in detail. A couple of things that, that are different um, or that are from the current courts, and this is really hard to see, I apologize. Um, we're putting, we're going to put the entrances and exits to the courts on the end. You can see a, a little gate right where that arrow is pointing. Um, and then closing up the entire court. So this, this space that's here uh, will be closed off, and this space in between the courts here will also be closed off so that really your only entrance in and out of each court is through this gate. Uh, main reason behind that is the balls go traveling everywhere, uh, and so it's a lot easier to keep everything enclosed. Uh, so, and then a couple of the other requests um, from the Pickleball Association. Right now, these fences, I believe, are drawn at eight feet in height, and we'll be reducing them to four, um, so that there's the eight-foot fences are simply on the end lines, and and they do a slight wrap in the corner here, and then we go to a four-foot fence for visibility um, of the spectators. Um, also in, in these pictures, uh, you can see kind of some of the shade structures that are built around. Um, there's bleachers involved. Uh, and again, those, those amenities will be will be seen once we get the bids back. Um, these are very preliminary. A couple other suggestions, which we, we have not seen yet, is the irrigation as well as the electrical drawings, um, is to be sure that there's a water fountain out here someplace, um, that all the courts have electrical hookups. Um, and then uh, we also plan on stubbing in these little boxes right in front here are at least the stub-ins for lighting for all of the courts. And again, um, if we can't afford to light all of them, at least the conduit is run and the boxes are placed so that in the future it would be very easily to, uh, to add those um, just based on budget. So I will, uh, I'm going to go back to a document. When I met with uh, the Pickleball Association last May, um, they kind of had their, their list of um, priorities and, you know, kind of what their expectation of the project was. And again, the, the main one was changing, was getting these courts built and there is their first priority. And, and then for sure to be able to, uh, to have them facing the right direction where it's a little bit more playable. Uh, but then a couple of uh, additional priorities were electrical outlets at the courts uh, as well as uh, future water fountains. So roughing, basically roughing in all the electrical and, uh, and water. And all of these little boxes are designed to be planters and some landscaping. So there, there are irrigation uh, plans that will be done. Uh, but like I said, these are very preliminary. So... We have not seen yet the, where those irrigation uh, opportunities would be to one wash the court as well as uh, adding the water fountain. The second priority uh, was to have sidewalks constructed at the ends of the courts, providing safe walkways around. Uh, one of the problems that we had with the first court is on this side there's this really small gravel and that gets stuck in, in their shoes and then back out onto the court, um, kind of scrapes the court as well as a, a safety hazard out there. So um, this funky coloring all the way around is sidewalk. So uh, I think we've, we've addressed that. Um, third priority is windscreens in all of the eight foot fencing. Uh, not only does that provide for a break in the wind, but it also is, is a good backdrop for for the ball so they can see it uh, coming at them a little bit easier than the, the mesh or the see-through uh, fencing. So that is in our notes to discuss uh, with the architect of, of being able to add those. Um, and then fourth priority is to have night play lighting at 
um, this set of courts. And again, that'll all be budget oriented, uh, but at minimum we will be adding the, uh, the rough in for it. So it could be added in the future. And then uh, to have their fifth priority is to have four foot fences on the side of the existing courts. And as you can see, there is quite a bit of work done around the existing courts as well as part of the project to, to tie them in similarly with uh, the new courts added here. Um, so really we've been trying to work very closely with the association uh, to be sure that we're getting uh, we're getting the best bang for our buck and, and kind of exactly what everyone is expecting in the in the project uh, and that there's uh, really no surprises as as it gets constructed. So kind of the next steps in the process um, we will re review these preliminary drawings uh, get them back to the the architect and engineers they will add and make any changements changes and adjustments that we recommend bring them back as a as more of a 90 to 100 percent completion documents let us review them again uh, then they'll go back add those changes if there are any uh, and then the project will go out to bid we're hoping to start construction late winter early spring and it does have a uh, six month completion, 180 days uh, project. So we're, we're probably looking at um, early to late fall of next year for the courts to be, uh, to be open. With that, uh, I will take any questions. Uh, yeah, Mr. Keene, uh, it's not specifically about the courts, but the Pickleball Association Approximately how many members are in that association? And, and also wondering how much maybe it's grown in, say, the past five years or so. I know it's a fast-growing It certainly sport. is. And with that, we do have the president of the Pickleball Association here. So I'll bring him up and let him answer that question. Thank you. Hi, I'm David Rossing. Uh, I live at uh, Papago Lane here in town. I've been a resident in Havasu for the last eight years, my wife tells me. I lose track. Um, to answer your question, there are uh, 220 members of our association at this date. We are in the process of updating our membership rosters. There are roughly 400 some registered pickleball players in Havasu. And every day I go up there, there are people I don't recognize. There, we've been conducting uh, beginning pickleball instruction since mid-September. And there have been eight to 12 people every week for this period of time. They're interested they are there. Um, we started the association three years ago, four years ago. Um, what else was there in your question? Just wondering how there's 220 or so members now, what it was, you know, a few years ago, but maybe even the registered uh, players. I, I guess just reinforcing how much the sport has grown in the past few years. Yeah, when we started, uh, there were 30 some members um, four years ago when Tim Weaver was starting the, the organization or getting people going. We formed the association because there were needs for space uh, and it is now at 220. Uh, we're delighted with the progress that's being made and we know that there are things a budget that has been proposed won't meet, and we'll continue to work with the city to try to accommodate the changes that need to be made in the future. We know windscreens, for example, were not part of uh, the, the first set of four courts, and the association stepped up and, and paid for those, as well as the sunshades and that. So we will continue to work with the city to try to uh, lessen the burden what, what is the 
age range of the members? The age range of the members, uh, there are some ladies I don't ask for that. <laughs> but they, they're in the 40s up through um, our oldest member is 84, who is active on the court. Um, so it's a wide range. We've been working uh, the last two years with the city with Camp I Want to Go to with the youth to introduce some pickleball. Uh, at some point in time, the expansion of the courts will allow additional use, and we, we see perhaps uh, more youth being able to be involved. The lights on the court will provide opportunity for working force that can't get to the courts at this point in time, other than maybe a Saturday or Sunday, having additional opportunity. So you're really doing something for the community for the future. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions from the members of the board? Well, I have a, I have a couple. Um, did you say that the 50 parking spaces are intended to be included in this phase? Correct. Okay. I believe there's 48 within these barriers here. Um, these spaces, I'm not exactly sure, are going to get painted uh, as we may use them as turnarounds to get to the next aisle way. Gotcha. Um, what's the size of a pickleball court? I, it, maybe not exact dimensions, but in comparison to a tennis court. About three quarters of the size of a tennis court. Okay. The, um, the separations... The, the fences that separate the courts, like in that like in th that one section that's a quad, right? Mm -hmm. the, the fences that separate the courts, you said that those there will not be like a walkthrough, so each of those courts will be individual? Correct. You will get in and out of the courts from the end lines. Okay. Are there any other, um, in, any other groups that use this, I mean, that, that, that would benefit from having these extra courts is it simply this is just caters to pickleball pretty much just caters to pickleball okay. and uh, one of the one of the problems is you'll get somebody that will try to be as polite as they can and walk behind a game already going on to get through well that's still a distraction to the to the players on the court so um, you know we, we kind of want to close those up uh, to me it'd be more uh almost more like a racquetball court in, in those regards where there's, uh, you know, the one way in and one way out. Okay. What about those two triangular shaped spots between uh, court one and courts two and three? Are those, uh, are those just? This is a grade differential. Um, okay. These courts sit considerably higher uh, oh, okay. than this court will sit so that this is going to be basically a hill. Gotcha. Okay. I think my question goes along with some of your questions, Mr. Chair. Just will there be a basketball hoop installed or anything like that so there is a little bit more of multi-use functionality with the courts? Not on these courts currently, no. Okay. And my other <clears throat> thought was just um, considering the potential additional traffic on those residential streets. It's a pretty narrow street at that bend where you enter the park. Will there, will there be any road work to expand that or to improve that? It is definitely something we're looking into. Um, there's also a conversation going on right now if this is the best place to put this road or is it to kind of come straight through this way uh, down to a, so that it would alleviate uh, the traffic on the, as you come in now mm -hmm. on that twisty, twisty road. So those are some of the conversations uh, that are taking place. Um, because, yes, that is very narrow through there, especially if you get cars parking on the sides uh, of the of that driveway. And since this expansion, I know this was, there is a, a master plan for the development of this area, but since this has um, been made public for this expansion, has there been any contact by the residents in the area or questions that we should be thinking about? I have not received any any contact from the residents in the area. Uh, I am not sure if any advertisement or anything in that regards has gone out to them to notify them that this project will be started. Um, so I would have to check with our engineering group on uh, on how they do those uh, those plans. Okay. 
Thank you. Yes, Mr. Welty. Um, would it be possible to do an entrance and an exit at two different areas and basically have like a one way to alleviate traffic going in and out one or the other? Like you said, coming in on that one side sure. of the parking lot, like could it be just a, an entrance on one side and an exit on the, the other way? Could certainly be looked at. Uh, and just just yeah. a thought, when, um, again, maybe would help alleviate all the traffic going to one area of, you know, Instead of the other. basically it would cut down half in one area and in the other area. Um, and the other question is on the windscreens, what type of material is that? Uh, they're the metal slats that, that go through the fence. Mm. Oh, vinyl? Vinyl slats, sorry, but, but through the... Then I guess my concern with the vinyl is how well is it going to hold up and how often is it going to be need to be maintained? As far as replace, I know the vinyl doesn't hold up. It's like the fencing and stuff that we use out here and the other stuff doesn't hold up too well. We have put, uh, when we installed the the slats uh, that were purchased by the association two years ago, and we have seen zero wear on them, so they're holding up really well. Okay. Any other questions from the board? This item's on the public hearing. Uh, any comments or questions from those attending? Hearing none, we'll move on to uh, item eight on the agenda, which is future discussion items. I wasn't here at the last meeting. I did see in the minutes that um, Teen Break was asked to be on a future agenda, so I just wanted to um, request that again. It certainly will be as we start planning, and then it'll be on pretty much every agenda ongoing. Okay. Oh, that's right. Any, anything, anything you want to hear about, Mr. Knotts, Mr. Howe? Uh, what's our next budget cycle milestone for the city? You know, we just got the calendar at 4.45 as we were walking out the office. Oh, good. You had plenty of time. <laughs> out of the office. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I, I haven't memorized it uh, as we were walking over to come over here. So, uh, yeah, the, the retreat is coming up at the end of January. That's probably okay. the, the next biggest milestone. Um, I do know our CIP projects are uh, due at the end of December. Uh, anything that we would be adding um, to that packet. Uh, so we're right in that start of that. But again, like I said, we just kind of received that calendar as we were walking out the door to come here today. Okay. Um, hmm. So end of December would be when when Parks and Rec kind of racks and stacks requirements that we'll be pushing forward. It's uh, it's really I guess that as we keep a five year CIP running, it would be so then the we're going to drop off this front year, so we're going to add that that what would be that following six year. Uh, and basically what I'm going to add is some of the projects that didn't make it into um, this five years, such as um, part of the renovation of the aquatic center. Um, that, that's really my main project to add back in into that, um, including that front end, that's remaking where yeah. the front entrance is and, and some birthday rooms off of the pool area. Okay. I, I'm I'm thinking about our our next agenda item as we as you discuss this <laughs> and uh, sure. what the end of December is going to look like for us. Um, uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, I definitely want to. I, I think it's time to make make sure we get an update on on all the budget uh, happenings at our next meeting. I second that request with the addition of uh, if any fees will be recommended for adjustment if that's the right timing for for that as well fees are actually going back to council tomorrow oh. um, for their final adoption and um, the 
I don't, I don't believe any of our admission fees are going up. And council did request that both um, the after school program and camp programs not be raised. Okay, so. thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, well, I think that means we're ready to move on to um, item number nine on the agenda, future meetings. Future meeting dates are December 23rd and January 27th. So, uh, December 23rd is right smack dab before Christmas. Uh, I don't, um, I, I think we're going to have a tough time uh, getting a showing here, but, um, before we discussed item eight, I was prepared to just cancel the December meeting, but wondering if there's some input from the board on uh, on uh, on a need to convene at some point before December, before January 27th. So if we want to consider moving the December um, meeting up a week, or uh, or if there's anything to discuss for a December meeting, any any comments from the board? Any comments from from Mike or Sherry? And the, really, the, the, like I said, the big uh, CIP project that I was going to propose that we add into that six years is adding back that renovation um, of the of the front end of the aquatic center. Um, okay. So does that January 27th meeting, does it occur before or after the retreat? Do we know? I, I, I don't, don't mean to put you on the spot. Sorry, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, it's important. Give me two seconds and all I right. can... And then we had the, we had a similar discussion last year at this time. I just don't remember exactly how it went. I should have dug through my minutes. I should have dug deep through my minutes. Um, the, but. the city council retreat is January 30th, so it oh, would be okay. right before. Oh, perfect. All right. Or right after this meeting. So we can solve all of our problems three days before. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. I move that we cancel the December meeting and meet in Jan on January 27th for our next meeting. All right. There's a motion to cancel the December 23rd meeting. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second to cancel the December 23rd meeting. All in favor of canceling the December 23rd meeting, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So our next meeting will be on January 27th, 2020. That brings us to the last item uh, on the agenda. Anyone care, anyone care to make a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. Uh, I'll second. All right, we're adjourned.